Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Iman Mavrori. I'm a master solution engineer at Salesforce. And today I want to give you an intro to lead management 101. I think this is a really important topic. I think it's something that can help pretty much all of our Salesforce customers. And I think a lot of people don't really understand it. So hopefully today uh, we get through it and you walk out of here really understanding how to use leads better. First and foremost, though, let me just say thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being customers. Thanks for taking time out of your day with everything going on to learn a little bit more. Crystal, did you say something? No, nope, I'm here. I did not say anything, but I'm here. Oh, okay. I thought you said, I'm worried now that people can't hear me. But thanks for coming. Okay. I hope this is a good use of your time. Stop me if you can't hear me, and uh, uh, we'll get through this together. All right, so for today, what are we going to do? First, I'm going to explain lead management. There's a bunch of stuff to explain. I'm going to explain it. Then I'm going to do a quick demo because slides are great, but people like seeing it. Then I'm going to give you access to the same demo environment so you can play with a lot of the stuff. Uh, and at the bottom of the hour, we're going to open it up to Q&A. Uh, now, look, if you've never joined me before, let me just give you some tips for a good time. One, don't try to click along with me. This is not an Emon click along. I've got way too much content. And there are way too many of you on this webinar for me to wait for you to do what I'm doing. And then I, that's just not how this is going to go. So if anything, sit back. Relax, put your feet up, and prepare to drink from the fire hose. But don't do what I'm doing as I'm doing. All right. Anytime you got questions, put them in the sidebar somewhere on your screen. There's a go to webinar sidebar. Open it up, find the question section, put your, put your question in there. Crystal will throw it to me at the bottom of the hour. You can also find the handout. You can download this deck right now if you want, right from there. Or do nothing, and you'll wake up tomorrow morning with an automated email in your inbox with a link to this recording and the handout. Um, all I ask though is just please fill out a survey. I actually am very strongly thinking about changing all of my webinars for next month to help everyone that's uh, kind of impacted by the coronavirus on how we can maybe help you work differently given the new circumstances we're all under. So I would really want your feedback is, does that make sense? Am I out in left field? So if you could all please just fill out that survey and let me know if you like those ideas at the end. Um, That'll help me help you. <laughs> All right, and last but definitely not least, I gotta sit through this webinar. So can we try to have a good time? All right. So lead management. Iman, what are leads and how do they help me make more money? All right, let's hit it. So let's start with the first basic question that I'm pretty sure a lot of you are, are, are asking right now. Iman, do I have to use leads? No, no, you don't have to use leads, but you don't have to brush your teeth or exercise either iman should i use leads yes yes you should use leads that is what the whole point of this webinar is about i think most of you should use leads all right iman but like why i've already got accounts and contacts why even use leads all right well let me just let's just set the 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 playing field here let's like level the ground here let's start with some context what's an account an account's a business all right, and that makes sense. Everyone knows that. Well, what are contacts? Those are people at those businesses. All right, well, what's an opportunity? That's you trying to sell something to those people at those businesses, right? So there's a sales cycle with these people at this business, and then all those activities, tasks, events, that's how you try to sell to those people at those businesses, right? A lead is accounts, contacts, and opportunities all rolled into one. It represents a business, a potential buyer business, a person, the actual email and phone number, and there's a chance that there's a deal. There's light at the end of that tunnel. There's potentially revenue at the end of that record. Okay, so a lead is all three of those records in one, but it's an unqualified person. Think about all those times you go to a trade show and someone just you know throws their business card in there because they want to win the iPad or whatever. You've never spoken to them. You don't know if they're still at the company. You don't know if they want what you've got. You don't know anything about them. So why dirty up your account and contact database for someone that might not even exist, right? If I go to your website right now and I fill out a form, Iman Mavrury, super interested. You don't know if I'm real. You don't know if that's anything. So why dirty up your good, clean data? Later, once you have some level of qualification, we'll talk about that, that's when you convert the lead and now you break that one record out into an account, a contact, and an opportunity, all right? So 
but why do that? I mean, it just seems like you're taking extra steps to create accounts, contacts, and opportunities. Well, one, it keeps your data clean, right? Just cleanliness. That way you can run a report on, show me all my accounts. And all the, I don't wanna say riffraff, but all the people you don't know won't be in that, right? You don't have to worry about filtering out a bunch of noise, okay? Also, we've created features, specific features to help you with leads because you do different things with leads than accounts and contacts. So a few things like uh, who can own a lead? When a lead comes in, you can assign it to your inside sales team or your, you know, uh, your, your team of people that are going to call them back. And whether it's Crystal or whether it's Iman, it doesn't matter. Just the first person, call them back. Okay? You can't do that with accounts and contacts. Accounts and contacts have to be assigned to Crystal or to Iman, to a person. So leads can be owned by a Q, your Spanish speaking team, your product expert team, your BDRs, SDRs, there's a thousand acronyms that people use for these. Um, we also give you some features and I'll go over them, but we give you features to help you get people from your website into Salesforce, get those people assigned to the right people, get them uh, responses. So there's a lot of features here that we provide that should help you in those early stages of the sales cycle. Now, when we talk about leads, I always get this question. Hey, Mon, someone went to the website, they filled out a form, they're a lead, and we thought there was a sales cycle there. We converted them, we made them into a contact, but you know what, mm -mm, they didn't buy. Not, they just, now it's not a good time. So can I like put them back as a lead? No, the answer here is no, no backsies. Okay, this is a one-way flow. Now might not be the right time to buy, but that doesn't mean that you don't know who they are, you don't know what they need, you don't know what their timing is. You, uh, what that, when we convert them to a contact, they're gonna stay there. And that's okay, you can have contacts that aren't yet customers, okay? But what you're showing is you've done a different level of qualification for those people. You can still nurture them and reach out to them and we'll talk about that, but you don't go, ooh darn, the sales cycle didn't work, I'm just gonna rewind all the records and go back to a lead, okay? That's generally not the right answer. All right, so, and when we talk about this, when I go through this whole wizard here, you all, have different sales processes. All of you sell different stuff to different people and you do it in different ways, right? So I can't tell you the exact perfect flow for you, but these are the principles that you should think about on every one of these steps. Make it easy for your prospect to give you information. Think about your own personal experience. You've gone to a website, you wanted to see a video or learn about a product or something, and then the form they gave you was like a hundred fields long, you know, mother's maiden name, give me three addresses you've lived. It's like, you know what? I'm just, we're not going to do it. You don't get better data with longer forms. You just get less people filling out those longer forms. So I suggest make it easy for them to give you info. And when they give you that info, respond immediately, quickly. Look, my fence broke a couple years ago and I had to find some random company to fix it. Who'd I go with? I go with the cheapest person? I mean, I hope, but probably not, no. I went with the one that actually followed up with me quickly. Uh, I reached out to like three people from Yelp. Two of them never even got back to me. Someone snapped back, that's the person I went with. So be quick. And when you call, know what you're talking about. Know who they are, have context, respond personally, right? No one likes it when they just pick up and go, hi, you're a random person. I have no idea who you are, what we're talking about. Start from the beginning. <laughs> Don't have corporate amnesia use the insight we have to give them a very tailored follow-up response, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to prioritize leads, how to nurture leads that aren't quite ready yet, okay? Uh, and then the whole time, you've gotta be optimizing. You gotta find the parts of your process that are broken and keep adjusting those dials until this thing is dialed in. But you're not gonna get it right the first time, okay? All right, so what are those special features that make leads work really well? The first one is a feature called Web to Lead Forms. You all have this, this is included with your license. It's a feature, you generate a form. Uh, we create the HTML for you. You just pick the fields. You go, I want first name, last name, company, phone number, you know, fields, pick them. We'll generate HTML, but it's basic HTML. It will work, you can put that on your website, someone can fill it out and it will shoot leads into Salesforce, but it has no styling, no branding, no colors, nothing. So you need someone that's more developer, someone who's a website person, to style the form, but functionally, the integration of Salesforce, it just works, okay? And you can even do things like add hidden fields to your form. So maybe you have a product interest field or what campaign should I route these people into field. That can still be on the form, they can just be hidden. 
In that way, you can have a bunch of different web forms or you can pass in values to this form and you can keep track of things like affiliates or lead source or, you know, they came to this form from Google or they came to this form from Yelp or something like that. And now when these leads come in, uh, there's a feature for dupe matching. You can create duplicate rules and matching rules. They sound like they do the exact same thing. <laughs> a matching rule is what you decide makes someone look like a match. So you can say, for example, if your name and your email match perfectly, you're a dupe, you're a duplicate, that's it. Or you could just say, I don't care what your name is, I'm looking for email, company, phone number, right? So you can pick the criteria for what makes a match. And then you can create these duplicate rules that look for matches. And then if they find a match, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna block the record from being created? Are they gonna alert the user? Are they gonna just let you report on it later so you can merge them together? So uh, here's one thing I would say, go easy on duplicate management. There's really nothing you're gonna do to never have duplicate data. And if you try to get real draconian and make it so no duplicates can be created, you're probably blocking records that should be created. Uh, you know, is John Smith the same as Jonathan Smith, you know? And if you block them because you think they're the same, you might be missing out on that second Jonathan Smith. Also, as a user, if I got to keep entering data all the time and I keep getting errors saying it won't let me do it, you're making the system less friendly. So in general, I'd say put some rules in here, go easy on it, and just plan on having to merge and dedupe later no matter what. You clean your room every however often you clean your room. You don't clean it once and you're done. You don't make a rule that says I'll never make this room dirty. You clean it regularly. Same thing with data. So now the lead came in. Is it a duplicate? Is it not a duplicate? We know. We know they're not a duplicate. So now what are we going to do? Well, now you can assign the lead to the best person to follow up, to the right person for them. And there's this feature called lead auto assignment rules. You all have this. And so when a lead comes in, you can create these criteria and you order the criteria one, two, three, you know how numbers work. And so let's say it's going to check rule number two. Is this lead in California? Yes, you're assigned to Bill. It doesn't even check rules three, four, five, six. So first rule that matches, that's the lead, that's the person that is assigned to that lead or the team assigned to that lead, okay? You can send a notification to that person or the team. Um, I uh, like creating automation rules to follow up or pester people afterwards. There's a field called viewed by owner in Salesforce. So you can assign the lead to let's say Bill, and then you can create an automation rule that goes, hey, uh, did Bill even look at his lead yet? If he hasn't, send him a reminder email. In a day, take the lead away and throw it into the shark tank and let anyone who's willing to work on the lead grab the lead. So there's a lot of really things you could do there, uh, especially with like partners. If you assign leads to your partners that you can't directly control because they're not your employees, that shark tank approach really works. Where you let them know, look, you get first right of refusal. This is your lead. Here you go. Call Crystal. And then after a day, you can go, hey, you still haven't called Crystal. And then in two days, you don't get to call Crystal. We put her in the queue and we ring the dinner bell first come, first serve. You'd be surprised how quickly behavior changes when they know they don't just get to keep that lead forever. All right, so now lead comes in. It's not a dupe. We assign it to the right person, then what? Well, respond to the customer. Now you could have me, the person, write an email or you can create an auto response rule. And again, it works just like the lead response, uh, lead assignment rules where they're numbered and they're prioritized. The first criteria that matches, that's the email template they're gonna get. So did they come from this form? Are they interested in that product? Are they a CEO or a VP of sales? Whatever your criteria is, you can send the right email template response. So as soon as they fill out the form, they're gonna go to a thank you page and they're gonna check their email and it's gonna say, hey man, Bill's gonna follow up with you shortly. Okay, so then, then you just do what you need to do to qualify your lead, right? Call them, email them, have meetings with them. And most of you are gonna qualify based on things like decision maker, budget, authority, or like I said, this is timing, need. So you all have your own version of, is this person worth our time? And once you determine this person, there's light here, there's some deal here that we could try to get done, then you convert the lead. And when you convert the lead, you can either map them to an existing account or contact if there was one, or you can create a brand new one, okay? And all those fields get routed to the right place. So like the phone number and email address go to the new contact record because that's their email address. The company name and industry and number of employees, those go to the account, right? So you don't lose anything. You don't have to uh, re-enter any data. 
and all your activities move over. This just becomes the next step of the client's lifestyle. So those are the features in leads, okay? Um, but let's talk about best practices, all right? You might have too many leads. You might have more leads than you have employees. So who are you gonna call? You're gonna go alphabetical order? You're gonna go in order of height? I think you should call your best leads first. The ones that are most likely to generate revenue, call them. And then work your way out to people that you don't even, you don't think are gonna do anything, right? So how does it work? All of you can build simple lead scoring right now. So look at the fields on the left. I've got decision maker, do they have a project to find? Is there a budget? Then I've got formula fields on the right. They're just regular formulas, okay? And you can make whatever numbers you want. And these are just very simple examples of if the checkbox is checked, uh, five points. If it's not checked, zero points, okay? And so you just create your own number weights for those values, and then you add them up. And here this lead score, 18, all right? And then you can have even another formula field that gives you some kind of four star, five star, three star image based on the score. So these, all of you can do with formula fields uh, or even emojis. You do not need any add-ons for basic scoring. But then there's more advanced ways to score. Like sure, one thing is I know this about you, right? You are the decision maker, you have a budget, so you score high. But what if you want to go by engagement, right? So Crystal might be a very high scoring lead and I call her and now's not the right time, the right time. So she goes, Iman, call me back in July. All right. So I put a task for July. But we start sending her a lot of emails. We start noticing that she's opening them. She's going to the website. She's downloading white papers. She filled out a form to watch a video. So if you're interested in tracking marketing engagement, we have an add-on product called Pardot. This is for marketers that send a lot of emails. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But that add-on product, none of you just have it. You have to pay for it. But that'll let you track engagement. Okay? Did they open the email? Did they not? And you can assign points based on that. Okay? And when they hit a threshold that you arbitrarily hit, that's when the rep can get an email saying or a task saying, Iman, now is the time to call Crystal. Sure, she said call me in July, but something must have changed. She's super engaged now. She's clicking on all these things, opening all these things. Reach out to her. Okay. The other feature, this is another add-on, you do not have this by default, is called Einstein, Sales Cloud Einstein. This is our automation, our, our uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, basically algorithms staring at your data, trying to score it for you. So if you don't know what makes a good lead and you're not necessarily looking at engagement, Salesforce can look at all your leads over you know, the last six months see which ones actually convert and generated revenue and which ones didn't. And then it can kind of blur its eyes and go, uh, this score is pretty good because it looks like leads that generally generate revenue. So if you want us to tell you about what leads are good leads, that's an Einstein lead score add-on. If you want to get really into marketing and drip emails and different emails based on they opened an email or not, that's part of Both of those are add-ons. Everything else I've talked about, all of you have. This is another add-on, but it's not from us, it's from the community. No matter what, when you get these leads, accounts, contacts, that data could go stale. Crystal could change roles, Iman could change titles, companies you know, change. So there are apps out there that provide data enrichment. Uh, so one's called Clearbit. We did a webinar with them a while ago. You just put in someone's email address, and if they have them in their big database, they'll give you their name, their title, the company's info, all the firmographic information, and they'll regularly clean it too. What's nice about this is if you're a software company and you just say, let's say, uh, Iman, give me your email address to sign up for a free trial. All right, you get my email address. These things can take the email address and now give you a phone number to call them, right? Uh, or a title or something. So really powerful tools. They all have various specialties, you know, medical uh, contacts or contacts in Asia Pacific. So look at these if you're interested in data enrichment and data cleansing. If you've got way too many leads um, or just a lot of leads and you have people doing a call down list, use something called the console. You all have access to the console. It's a different layout within Salesforce that kind of smashes together a bunch of information in one screen and uh, lets your reps kind of focus on a record and jump between many records without having to open a bunch of different browser tabs or lose what they're looking at. If you have people sitting at their desk, just calling down the line, use the console. 
And if this is something you do all the time, if you have teams of people that do this, we have an add-on product. You do not have this. It's called high velocity sales. It lets you as a sales manager say, if someone comes in from the web form, wait a day, call them. If you get voicemail, call them again two days later. If they actually talk to you, send this follow-up email. So you as a manager can create this cadence of what, how long do you wait, what email do you send, what phone call do you make, and your reps can just log in and it'll have a list of, hey, it's time for you to call Crystal, you gotta send this email to Iman, and they can just kind of execute. So it's a great way to come up with a new play, you know, a sales play, and deliver it to the field really quickly, okay? Uh, and when you put high velocity sales together, they'll see their work list, they'll have their phone, they'll have a script, email templates, lead scoring, kind of all bundled together. So that's something that really works nicely when you bring them all together. Okay. Uh, and this is what it looks like, like on one screen. That's the concept. Okay. Now, if you're going to be sending mass emails, you don't have to do it with an advanced tool. We have a feature called list emails. You can all right now uh, send list emails to your customers. You can create a list of people and mass email them. Or you can put them into a campaign. So I just did a webinar. I could put you all into a campaign. I can track the performance of that webinar and see if any, if any of you like bought anything, for example. And that's my ROI on the webinar. And then I can even send you an email for attending the webinar. So I don't do it quite like this because I have go to webinar and whatnot. But the idea here is if you have an event, if you have a, a effort, a marketing effort, you can put all those people into a campaign and then track their performance, and then even email everyone in that grouping, okay? So there's lots of ways to send emails one-on-one, -on -one, automated, or, you know, marketers sit down and once a month pick the list of people and target them, okay? But if you do think you need a more advanced marketing tool, you should just know Pardot exists, okay? So if you wanna send dynamic emails with different content, uh, if you wanna have really rich email templates, landing pages, forms, and then automate things based on their engagement, we have a feature for that, it's called Pardot. It is an add-on cost, but if this is something you do, I would look into it. These are features you all have, but you probably haven't turned on. So I'm not gonna bother showing you how to do it, just look at this deck later, but there's a feature for turning on uh, Google powering your address data and auto completing your address fields. So when you start typing in addresses, Google Maps will just, just give you the data. And this is a great way to standardize addresses. Just turn that on. And then also, there are two features here. These pretty much only work for accounts in the US, um, but it's nice. Uh, if you turn these on and you start typing in a company name, if we have info on the company name, we'll enter the info for things like their website, their address, their company phone number, uh, right into the account for you. So like light data enrichment, and we'll put their logo in there. It's kind of nice. Can't hurt. Okay, so that's an example of me doing it with Apple, right? Uh, but you know, some small mom and pop, two-man company, you, you probably wouldn't have them in here. Bigger companies, definitely will be, or most likely will be. And then measure everything, measure everything. You're probably not sure how many activities it takes to go from lead to conversion. Uh, and then whether you convert or not, do they buy, right? Are people converting people that shouldn't be converted, right? Uh, so there's lots of ways to measure this stuff. And if you're not comfortable with reports and dashboards, that's okay. Install this dashboard pack. There is a pack off the app exchange that installs a bunch of reports and some dashboards for you. Uh, they're not perfectly tuned for your business, but they're a good starting template and then take those and tweak them by region, by product, by month, by whatever you want, but you have a good set of dashboards that you didn't have to build from scratch. All right, and so you might be pretty excited uh, about all this, about how do you get your leads in here? Uh, it's really all about using the different import wizards that we have, and, and really, you're gonna wanna get every record in its own row and every field into its own column, okay? No mixing and matching of stuff. Every field, its own column. And one thing you gotta be careful about is Excel wants to like make things into links. If it sees their email address, it tries to turn it into a link. That doesn't help you when you're data loading, it'll break it. So make sure you're just putting in plain text of plain emails, plain phone numbers as text, that'll work. Uh, and just if you have a field like birth date or shoe size or you know, are you pregnant or not or whatever it is you're tracking, um, make sure there's a field for it in Salesforce. If there isn't one, create the custom field and then you can load the data in there. And before you load the data, just standardize it in Excel. It's never gonna get easier to standardize your address data than when it's in a big table, okay? Uh, and then when you load it, don't just
thousand, and then do it with your three thousand. Okay. Uh, and you should know if you load records, automation will still fire. So assignment rules will fire. Things will fire because you're creating leads. So if you don't want them to fire, turn them off. Do the data load. Turn them back on. Okay. And there's an import button. If you just go to the leads tab, there's an import button. You click import. A little wizard walks you through. You know, you want to import leads. Where's what spreadsheet are you using? Map your fields. Go. All right. And uh, I think I, I believe that most of you should be able to do it. So let's just go over some of the uh, basics here, what we have. So I'm in Salesforce, I'm a rep. Uh, how do leads get in here, right? I've got my own uh, web to lead form. As an example, web to lead form. You could put this on your own Salesforce community page if you want, you could put it on your website, but here's mine. And I'm just gonna say first name, Tony Tiger Live. Uh, let's say Tiger Corp. What is this, March? March, uh, CEO. Okay, put in some numbers, hit save. They're gonna go to a thank you page. That person's gonna get a thank you email. And now they're actually in my Salesforce as a lead. So if I come in here and I just sort by name, what did I say, Tony? Probably said Tony, let's see. Huh? Uh, I don't know why I'm missing it, but they're in here. So you pick a lead. In this case, I'm just gonna pick myself. Now uh, let's go to Iman. This is my lead, okay? And this is my lead record. And before I pick up the phone to call, I see everything. I see their name, their company, their phone number. Uh, if you had a tool like Pardot, you could see all the emails they've opened in the past, what, what websites they've visited. So I have an idea of what they're talking about. Here's my Einstein lead score. I can see why this lead scored a certain way. I can see every email, every activity, every phone call, every note I've ever had with this person. Um, on the activity history here. So I can see who they've spoken to, what we've talked about, right? And now I call. And if you have Lightning Dialer, this is an add-on. If you have Lightning Dialer, you can just click to call. Okay. And when you do that, they can pick up, you can leave your notes, right? You can just log your call or you can even automate things. Like here I've got a field that says call back on, right? So I called Iman, call me back on the 26th. Okay, I hit save. That activities logged and then we can automatically schedule the follow-up activity uh, with an automation rule you can all do this today so you can log activities and create follow-ups automatically with automation rules and i'm talking to iman and he's a decision maker he has budget the time frame's pretty good it's save. so my formula fields are updating and my lead score my standard lead score is updated okay and you know as i'm looking at this lead, I might need help figuring out how to move them through the process. So I have this path at the top of the screen. You all have path and it tells you what fields to try and focus on and what you're trying to accomplish. And so you can keep moving through the process all the way through until they're converted. Okay. Uh, and if you wanted to, you could even send emails from here with email templates uh, or you could put them into nurture lists. So this would be something like if you had Pardot, you could say, oh, I just spoke to uh, Crystal and now's not a good time. I'm gonna put it in a nurture list, hit save. You just put them into the right list where marketing is gonna follow up with them. And then when they start opening emails and doing things, their Pardot score will bring them back to the front of the line, okay? So it's this, call, email, kind of over and over. Uh, and if I were to create a new lead, let's create a new lead. I'm gonna create another Iman here, so Iman, CEO company. And notice before I can even finish, notice the duplicate matching rule found it. You see that? It found that I was going to make a duplicate. And it's saying it looks like you're about to create a duplicate. You want to just see the duplicate? No, no, I'm still going to create the duplicate. So now I've got another Iman in here, and that's a duplicate. And notice there's a little widget you can put on the page right here. All right, you can put it wherever you want. I put it right here. And that widget tells you there's a duplicate. Do you want to merge them together? Which one's the one you want to keep? So you all have uh, you all have this standard uh, standard feature set. So I'm gonna just hit save. There you go. And I've merged the leads together. All their child records are together. We're in one spot again. Okay. And after doing all this, we're good to go. We're gonna convert the lead. So I click convert. And we could either, you know, if there was already someone from this company, we could just merge them with that account, or we're gonna create a new account new contact, new opportunity, go.
And there we go. That's those are the new records, account, contact, opportunity, and now we can start the sales cycle. Now we can really get into what products and quotes and getting my engineer to help and all of that, right? One more thing I wanna show you is something called high velocity sales. I just want you to see it, okay? So I can take uh, a bunch of people. Let's just say these four, five, oh, there's my Tony CEO guy, there he is. Okay, so there's my few people. You could, for example, say, you know, we just got all these people from a trade show. I know exactly how I want uh, my people to execute um, on this. So let's let's put them into a cadence. And so then when your inside sales team shows up, if you have high velocity sales, what's nice about it is you have your sales team, they could be working from home, they log in, and when they log in, they're gonna be on their homepage and they're just gonna see, hey, you've got seven things you gotta do today. They open up their queue, and this is who they have to call, right? Because you put them into that cadence, right? So they can just click the name, the record shows up, all the relevant details show up, everything shows up. Now that I'm ready, I just click the call, and I'm gonna hang up here, but you call, and notice even the script popped open for me, right? And I log my call, and then this is gonna move on to the next step where it's automatically sending an email or waiting to send an email, and I go to lunch and I come back and it goes, hey, Mon, now it's time to send somebody an email, right? And when I click it, it'll even load the email template for me. So, you know, I mean, it really makes it easy to just fire on these high volume of leads and keep the process that you think works well, all right? Okay, I think I'm gonna address most of this in questions uh, at the end. For those of you that wanna play with this stuff, you can go to salesforce.com slash E-D-O to sign up, fill out the form, log in, play around with it. You're not an admin, but you'll be like a sales rep. You can have your own form to fill out. Uh, you can import leads. I even give you a sample set of spreadsheet, uh, a sample spreadsheet with a set of leads that you can just import into the EDO using the wizard. You have all the perms, you have the data, just try it. Uh, I let you, you know, use the console. We let you use high velocity sales. You can log calls uh, and you have your own web to lead form that'll route leads directly to you. So try it out, but these are the kinds of things you can do, dupe management, you can do these things in the EDM. And if you need help sign, if you need help setting any of this up, uh, there's no shame in it. There's a partner wiser spread that'll give you two hours of free consulting just for saying Iman sent me. So thanks for coming to the webinar. They'll help you out with two hours of help. And if you need more help than that, maybe you liked working with them and they'll earn your business. These are links that'll give you more slow, in-depth, uh, information on those features. If you really need help importing leads, click that import leads link. If you want more help on web to lead forms, click, click the web to lead form. So I have more detailed resources right here to help you find what's most important. And uh, very specifically, this is only benefiting me uh, right now, but I'm hoping to help all of you. So Crystal and I are putting our webinars together for next month, and we're, they're gonna go live like next week. Uh, and I feel like it'd be really out of touch for me to just have regular webinars with everything going on in the world. I don't think people want to hear about just regular opportunity management. I'm surprised people showed up for lead management, genuinely. So I'm curious, would you all find it relevant and helpful if I did webinars next month on things like how to keep your team in the loop when they're remote, how to stay productive when they're potentially remote? These are kind of the brainstorm of things I have in mind, but I feel like I wanna arm you all with, these are the features you have, these are the things you can do, you don't need to like buy any add-on products to make it work, and I wonder if these kinds of events would be timely and relevant, um, but I don't know, I don't even know if you guys are being impacted by this stuff, really. I'm working from home, this webinar is from home, and I'm gonna be home for weeks, uh, at least. So it's impacting us, and Salesforce is doing a lot to change how we're working internally, and I don't know if that's impacting you guys at all. And so if you're being impacted by all this coronavirus stuff, I would really appreciate it, please, for me, if you could, at the end of this webinar, fill out the survey at the end and let me know if topics like this would be interesting to you uh, or what topics would be timely and relevant. The whole reason we do this is I wanna help you and we wanna help you. And if you, know, if you could help guide me in what you would want next month, I would really appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna take my first deep breath and sip of iced milk coffee. Uh, any questions, Crystal? So many questions. So many good. So many good questions here. Throw them at me. Okay, here we go. Elijah's up front. So he says, "How is a lead different and similar to prospects? 
So in the sales process, there's a stage for prospect, but how is that different or similar to a lead? Great question. Exactly the same thing. Totally the same thing. Leads are prospects. And if you use that terminology in your uh, company, that's okay. There's a feature in Salesforce called, uh, Salesforce called rename tabs and labels. So we call them leads just because we have to call them something. Uh, but if you don't like that, you can find leads and you can rename them uh, to prospect. Okay. And then when you hit the next button here, all those fields that said lead address, lead name, lead status now get called prospect score, uh, prospect status. So you can rename them. Now, to be clear, there are certain sales methodologies where people do things like suspect, prospect, uh, marketing qualified lead, sales qualified lead. So you can have, you can call the tab whatever you want, prospect, suspect, whatever you want. The idea here is they're an unqualified person, okay? And then within that tab, you can have multiple stages. So they can go from suspect to prospect to uh, marketing qualified to sales qualified, something like that. So same thing, <laughs> the <laughs> longest way to answer, same thing. <laughs> Great. All right, next up is Amber. So she's asking about the lead description field. Sure. She says, we have found that information does not transfer when we convert, except to the contact if we merge it with a contact that already has text in the contact description, description and then the lead description okay. info disappears. So kind of what are All best right. practices here? What, 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 what should, how should they think about this? So this is gonna to apply to, as good question, this is gonna to apply to everybody that goes, I have this field over here, and when I convert it, I have no idea what happened to it. it got, it's gone, I lost it. So you're gonna to go to Object Manager in Setup. You're gonna find leads. You're gonna to go to your field section, and you're gonna look for something here called Map Lead Fields. It's a button. And this is gonna take every field on your lead, these are all the fields on your lead, and it's gonna tell, ask you where do you wanna map it to. So for example, I've got a field on my lead called decision maker. What field would that go to? So I've got accounts fields, I've got contact fields, right? Um, I've got opportunity fields. So that's what I would do for you uh, is go to your setup, go to object manager, find your leads, go to this map leads fields page and look for your description field and just map it to the appropriate type of field. Notice that there will be some limitations like you can't map a text field to like a number field, things like that. But description to description should totally work. I'm surprised that wasn't done by default. Uh, so I'm not worried about it not being possible. I just think this is where you gotta go. Nice, okay. Uh, Philip is asking, when I contact a lead, can I automate a task to follow up in two weeks? Yes, uh, I showed that a little earlier. I'll show you an example of it again. So here, I've got my demo environment. I'm gonna go back to sales app, not the high velocity sales app. This is something you can all do. So there's a couple ways to think about how to do it. But here's the easiest way. I'm gonna just get a lead here, Sophia. All right, I'm gonna call Sophia. So here's what I'm doing. I have an action. These are, uh, field, these are a custom feature called actions. You can create an action that defaults values for you. So here I've got an action called VM for voicemail. When I click it, it automatically defaults all the fields like the task is completed, the, the type of task is voicemail, okay? And all the only thing you need to say is when do you wanna call them back? And I hit save. So I have an action that made it easy to log my activity, all right? The part that makes the new activity is an automation rule. You can have a process builder rule. That rule is just looking for tasks. It's looking for a task called left of voicemail. When it sees a task called left of voicemail, it will create a follow-up activity on whatever date you want, two days away from today, six days later, things like that. You can even create automation rules that are based on how long it's been since you've uh, talked to a, uh, a lead. So here's an example. Man, I'm noticing how much I touch my face uh, now that it's all in the news. Okay, all right, uh, pro process builder, process builder. It's like every time I make a good point, I just touch my face, okay. All right, so we're gonna create a new one. So here's a cool thing you can do. 
lead follow-up. And I'm just gonna do it whenever, all right, here we go. So whenever a lead, this object's looking at a lead right now, okay? So here's a cool kind of way you can do it. Let's say last, oh, uh, last activity. So you can create a field, for example, called last activity date, okay? Or days since the last activity, all right? And you can do something like, has it been more than 90 days? If it's been more than 90 days, uh, just send them an email, right? And you can pick an email template. Hey, how's it going? We haven't heard from you. How you doing, right? Or you could send an automation rule that says, create a task, create a record, create a task for your rep that goes, you should call them, right? Um, or, okay, or even if you're not doing it off last activity date, you can set scheduled automation rules to fire in the future based on dates. So if you have a renewal date or a sign up date or a, any date, what you can do is something like three hours or days before or after, whenever this rule fired, whenever the renewal date is, how many days since we last talked to you, the date you went live, pick a date field, right? So you can even pick different actions to take over different periods of time, uh, which, which will make your life really easy, right? So when something happens with the lead, do something right now, and then do something a little later in three days, in five days. This is also how you would do that, um, uh, the lead shark tank approach we talked about, right? So here in the criteria, you would have one for, I think it's called viewed, last viewed date, no, no, owner. Let me, I'm sorry, there's one more field here. Owner, owner, viewed by owner, unread by owner. Okay. There's a field called unread by owner. So you can say, if it's still, unread by owner right three days later hey bill you haven't even looked at crystal's record can you can you please do that and then day five just take it away and reassign it this is scheduling follow-up calls uh sending automated emails based on what's going on with the customer record this is how you're gonna do it excellent okay all right elijah's asking about data enrichment he's saying will the data enrichment apps work only on leads or can it also work on your contacts Contacts, accounts, leads, uh, they tend to work on all of those records. Uh, again, it's app by app, but I haven't heard one that's lead only, no. Uh, most of them leads and accounts and contacts. Okay, great. Um, and Jerry is asking, so he says, since many individual names, company name, et cetera, can be similar, can I create a duplication rule that catches based off a of phone number first, email second, or a contact? Yes and no. Yes, you can make your own dupe rules that do things like I need an exact match or I need a fuzzy similar match, okay? It doesn't order. It doesn't say first look for phone number and look for email, it's just conditional criteria. So yes, you can create your own criteria and you can specify fuzzy or exact, but it's not ranked. But yes, you can do that. Okay, and could the duplication rule work against an existing lead that has not been converted to a contact? Like an existing yeah. lead? Yeah, yeah, you can check cool. leads against other leads. You can check leads against contacts. You can check contacts against leads. You can check any object against other objects. So, yes. Perfect. All right. Uh, Sarika is asking, um, are the maps and locations uh, uh, features available in Classic? Are what available in Classic? Uh, maps and locations. Like some yeah. of those. Well, so are you asking about so we have a Salesforce Maps product. I don't know if you're asking about that or mapping fields. If you don't mind, give me a little bit more detail on what you're trying to figure out, though all of those things should be available in Classic. I, I, it'd be hard for me to answer without truly understanding your question a little bit better. So if you don't mind, just give me a couple more words on what those features are, I'll tell you for sure. Okay. And, and, and I'm uh, sorry, but my, my toddler uh, is home uh, downstairs. So if you hear some background noise, I'm sorry, but. She's been quiet so far, so. Uh, <laughs> nice, great. Okay, um, uh, Hey Ho is also asking here, um, how do you make it easy to upload and assign leads to different account managers? Is there a better way than just getting and inserting the sales manager's um, Salesforce okay. ID and then entering it in Excel before uploading to Salesforce to assign the leads to a different account manager? Uh, are there any easier ways to go about doing this? Well, so if there's a rule, you know, I would just use the lead assignment rules, right? So uh, you could have a lead assignment rule set up 
and whatever, however you do that, right? So something like, sorry guys, something like, uh, I'll just number it four, something like if they're in San Francisco, then who's gonna help them? Uh, and you can assign Crystal or something here, or you can assign a group of like West Coast sales team. So if you know there's rules around who gets what, put the lead assignment rules in there, just load the spreadsheet, Salesforce will sprinkler that out correctly. Uh, if there's no real rhyme or reason or logic based on fields that Salesforce can use, not to say that there's no reason, but you know it's not a field-driven criteria thing, then yeah, just put them in the spreadsheet. Use the owner ID or user ID in the spreadsheet, and that's your way of specifically saying, I don't care what these fields say, give it to Bill, give it to Samantha. But here's the thing, if you leave lead assignment rules on and you load that list, it's gonna use this. It'll just reassign them anyways. <laughs> so make sure you turn off your lead assignment rules if you don't want to use them for that data load. You just go to your rules and deactivate it, okay? So active, inactive, load your data, turn it back on. So uh, if it can be criteria driven, use lead assignment rules. If it can't, you're doing something in Excel and you don't have to use the IDs. There are tools out there that'll just take their names, your usernames and, and map them to IDs or something. But uh, if you do know how to map IDs, that is 100% the most accurate way to do it. Nice, okay. And switching gears for just a, for oh, just okay. a minute sorry, here. Sorry, 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 yep. Sorry. And if you don't mention any, and if you don't mention any owner at all and you don't have lead assignment rules you're the owner if you load a record and you didn't specify the owner and it didn't get assigned an owner you're the owner so keep that in mind. okay sorry go ahead okay nice um okay getting a couple questions from frankie and sarika on this um so for pardot switching gears for just a minute is there anything that can be viewed in salesforce that would be helpful for sales in relation if you if you have pardot and similarly frankie's asking where does a yeah. Salesforce Engage plugin fit into lead management? Okay, so uh, okay, so if you have Pardot, there's a couple things that your sales reps will get to use or see that will benefit them. One, let's say you're using Pardot to send emails and get people to forms and they fill out a form. When they fill out that form, all their info is going to get filled out. So they go to the form and they add their phone number, they add their email, your rep's just gonna see it sync. So their data becomes the same data. The other one is the Spardot score and grade. So a score is how interested are they in you, and a grade is how interested are you in them. Uh, so the example I give here is, if I were a college kid again, uh, I would score very highly for Tesla. I'd be on their website designing my own car. I'd get the Model X with the wings and it's black and it's all, you know, that's what I would do. And so I'd open their emails, go to their website. I would be super interested. My score is pretty high. But then when they start filling out the form and, you know, I live at home with my mom, I don't have a job, I'm a college kid, maybe I don't even have a license or something, my grade's pretty low. So Pardot will give you both of those. That'll be in here. You as a marketer can assign automation rules that'll impact your reps so maybe there's a task to call someone back or do something also you'll give them two more things they can do you can as a marketer create beautiful email templates that have the right positioning the right language the right branding and then you can make those uh pardot email templates available to your reps so your rep could just send the pardot email this is a pardot email and when they hit send they're getting a pardot email all the engagements pardon engagement stuff so one, you can specify email template stuff, or marketing can create awesome content and reps can help point that content to the right people, right? So if I call Sophia and Sophia is using a competitor, you know, and I know which competitor, I could pick the right nurture campaign, and I'm just making one up here, but I could pick the right nurture campaign that goes, ooh, Sophia already uses Disney, Sony, I'm picking a company. So let me put her in the Sony's our competitor nurture campaign. So when marketers send out the emails, we're sending the right perfect message to position ourselves differently. So those are the big areas. There's one more, one more, and that would be called alerts, engage alerts. So if you wanted to, you could have something called an alert, all right? And I think mine are all gonna be empty right now because I didn't, I didn't open an email. But what this would do is it would say, the second one of my uh, people 
goes to a website. The second someone opens an email, clicks a link, anything, I'm immediately gonna get this alert that goes, Crystal went on the website, Crystal opened the email. So if you want immediate follow-up, like almost scary, you know, they check the email and the rep calls them, engage alerts will help too. Those are the ways your reps are gonna see what's going on. So not only are they gonna see every email, every, uh, every piece of content, every website that they've ever opened, all of that history, they're gonna see all of that, but they'll also get to send your emails and put them into nurture key. Nice. All right. But, you know, I did a okay. whole separate webinar on Pardot. It is an add-on product. I kind of don't want to make this session too much about that because many of you might not have it. Um, but if you do a lot of email marketing or just general web marketing and you have salespeople that should get engaged at the right time, uh, take a look at Pardot. It's nice. I'll put the link to the recording in the chat. Oh, yeah, please do. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Okay. So Aaron is asking, um, do you know of a way to have a lead under an existing contact or is it beneficial to create a new lead even if the account contact already exists? She said, I realize converting them will not create duplicates. I'm not sure I understand the use case you're going for. I'm not sure I understand the business case, uh, the story you're trying to solve for here. Is it that there's already an Acme account and we already have three people from Acme, but now the fourth person showed up? Uh, or is it that Crystal's already a contact and then yet somehow showed up again as a lead? Or is it that you wanna track referrals? I'm, I'm not sure what your scenario is. If you could just tell me, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, we'll wait for, for more Sorry. from Aaron on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, this is from Melissa. She's asking, is the lead nurture um, pop, is the is the lead nurture list pop-up something that is available with Salesforce or is that only with Pardot? Okay, good question. Um, yes, no. Or let me put it this way. This feature that I'm showing you right here, this nurture list thing is a Pardot feature. But you can do something like this without Pardot. It just depends on whether or not you need Pardot to fulfill it or not. So for example, you could create an action or a flow or a button, or you could just put some fields on the record somehow, and you could you know, put them into a list and they could automatically be put into a regular old Salesforce campaign where then, then you do something, right? Then you send a regular list email out of Salesforce, or then your team exports it and uses your other email engine to send it out. So this concept of adding people to a nurture list, you can do without Pardot, but this exact feature I'm showing you is Pardot. All right, great. And Alex wondering, how detailed can you make the email automations in Salesforce without Pardot or with Pardot? So like kind of how, what is the difference there for email right. automations? Yep. So there's, oh man, there's so many ways to automate. Uh, I don't want to overload people because most of the people here are new, but I'm, I'm all right, I'm, all right, we're just gonna do it, we're just gonna do it. Here's, here's the thing. One, you can use Process Builder to send out emails the way you saw, right? So day one, do this, day four, do that, day 17, do this. It will not react to them opening an email or clicking a link or not. It doesn't do any of it, it doesn't know, it doesn't see that. Um, you could send out different emails at different stages, through regular old automation, well, it's just based on fields, right? Anyone that's the decision maker and their time frame is immediate, send them this email. Seven days later, send that email. But there's no, there's no way for them to augment their path. They are going down that journey, right? That's one one way to just send emails, automatic. The other way is high velocity sales. High velocity sales is an add-on product. You do not just have this, probably. And what this does is it has a different type of email cadence that you can create. Let me just show you one here. Here's one. So, waiting for it to look, all right, here's one. People came in from your website or whatever and they're put into the cadence. They're automatically going to get this email. If they open the email, they're gonna go down this path. If they didn't open the email, they're gonna go down that path, okay? So we can see if they've opened an email or clicked a link, it doesn't know which link, but if they open the email or click the link, they'll go one way or the other, okay? Uh, and you can do this with high velocity sales. So this is a little bit more drippy, uh, drip marketing controllable, um, but it can't do something different 
uh, based on which link they clicked. And it also doesn't do anything different necessarily. Um, I guess you could, I guess you could. Yeah, and then and then with Pardot, Pardot's gonna just give you the most uh, options, right? Wait a certain period of time, send an email, people get added to, so Pardot can do it in a lot of ways. High velocity sales, I would say, is like a step below. And then regular old automation rules are the least responsive, but they still work, and, and those would be one step below. Nice. All right. Yanova has a couple questions here. She's asking about um, how do I add a field to count the days of a lead in each state? So, like, how many days has it since it's been contacted, or how many days since the con since you attempted to contact, or how would you do that kind of adding a field to capture that information? Okay, so there's a, uh, I think I get what you're saying. It's like, how long was the lead in the open status? How many days were they in the contacted status? How many days were they in the qualified status, right? So what I might do is uh, create a start stop date field for each one of these statuses. So I might have an uh, entered open status, left open status, date fields, so two date fields. And then I would have a formula field that just subtracts the difference and it gives you a number. So when you create a formula field and you subtract dates, it's a, it just tells you the number of days between the dates. So they started in the open status on this date, they left the open status on this date, therefore the number of days in between is seven or whatever. And then you can report on that. The thing is you need that date field to get stamped. You need an automated rule to stamp that date field. So what you can do is create a process builder rule. When the status is contacted, stamp the date, the start date. When the status becomes qualified, stamp the date that it left contacted and started qualified, something like that. So date fields to capture start stop, a formula field to capture the difference, and then run reports. Perfect. That's how I would do it. Right. Yeah. yeah, that sounds good. All right, another you know, one here from... Sorry, sorry, but thinking about it, you might get away with even one less date field. Like you might just have a field that says date they entered the open status, date they entered the contact status. You might not need the end date for open and the end date for contact because they're the same. So you might just have the date they entered each status. Yeah, that would work too. There you go. Nice. I added the recording of Process Builder of your Great. intro to process and thing as well for folks who want help with that. Okay, okay. Yanova's also asking, can I set up a follow-up action for the leads unread by owner every day? Setting up a follow-up actions for the leads that were unread by owner every day. And I think you kind of touched on that already. Yes, every day isn't something that Salesforce just, it's not like every day, but you could say day one, day two, day three, up to however you specify the number of days, but it's not every day. If you want it to happen every day, you would need to set up a, you could do this. We don't need any other products to do it. You could schedule a job to run every night and look at all the leads that are still unread by owner and do something. But if you want to use Process Builder, Process Builder doesn't just recheck things just to check things every day. It goes into the list and then it fires on that cadence. So you got a couple calls. You got a couple ideas um, that way. Also, if you think you need to do it every day, that tells me it's not effective. If the first two times don't work, why are we doing it six, seven, eight, nine? Like I wouldn't want a lead to wait 15 days until something actually happens. So I think every day is something I'm uncomfortable saying, you should just set it up that way. I think your escalation path needs to be condensed. Day one, email. Day two, your boss gets an email. Day three, you know, we just take it away from you. Something, something that doesn't need to go for 45 days, because if you just make a reminder every day on every lead, uh, people are just gonna ignore your emails. They're just gonna just not care. So something to think about there, put some teeth behind the notifications, I guess. Carrot, yeah. stick, uh, stick. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah, she's asking, can those emails be sent to marketing managers and the owner of the-, yeah. the not, yeah. even, not even just emails, but you could do chatter messages, right? So three days later, at mention the manager. Five days later, at mention the marketing team or person. So whether it's assigning tasks, sending emails, or chatter, the answer is yes. All right, nice. Okay, uh, this one's from Jerry. He's asking, can you show a little bit about how to run the duplication catch or compare against existing leads? Okay. To, to compare against existing leads, yeah. 
All right, so the, this duplicate widget can exist anywhere on the page. You can drag and drop it, put it wherever you like. I, I put it here. It doesn't have to be there for you. It's a drag and droppable component, okay? So there's a couple things it does. So one, I'm gonna create a new lead. Doesn't matter how I create a new lead, but if it notices a duplicate, oh gosh, what I have, Iman E. Uh, what else do we have? There we go. So once it find, once my duplicate matching rule finds a match, it could stop me right here and say, do you want to view your duplicates? That's the other person you're trying to create right now. Look, oh, Im oh, I converted Iman. He's a contact now. So this lead is a duplicate of a contact. You sure you want to create them or just do you want to just go to the record that exists? So that's the first step, okay? But let's say, no, 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 no. We're just going to create the duplicate. For whatever reason, duplicate got created somehow. So now as a rep, when you look at a record, you'll see this little pop-up and it'll indicate that you should view duplicates. And again, you can view duplicates and decide uh, what you want to do. Okay. Or two, um, when you find that little widget, that widget will also tell you what you want. You can't merge leads and contacts. You'll need to convert the lead to a contact, then you can merge them. But you can at least stop working on this record and go straight to, let's say, the account and see everything about this customer account before you have to call them back. So that's that's really it. It's just that widget on the side. And when it finds a match, you can see the multiple matches and then merge them using the wizard. Uh, it's really just about notifying you and giving you that that visual indicator right there. Nice. Okay. Um, just a couple more here. This one's from Erin. So she wants to know a little bit more about kind of if that contact, if you're kind of duplicating and, you're, and the contact already exists. Um, so she says, um, is it beneficial for mar marketing wise to enter the inquiry as a lead or just add the inquiry as a task under the existing contact? Or even better, if we had a way to do the same type of lead function under the existing contact? What we're, she says, she has a use case here. She says, what yeah. we're running into is that we have to do, is that we have to do more research if it comes in as a lead to see our history with the contact and not sure to put it to put um, and not sure to put our activity in with that contact under the lead or the existing contact. All right. Yeah. If they're the same person, you don't need a lead record. If they're the same person, Iman is your contact and then Iman goes on your form and then there's a new Iman lead, that's okay. You look at the Iman lead and it goes, hey, there's a duplicate. Oh, there's a duplicate. Okay. Hey, Iman already existed as a company, as a contact. Just, you could almost just kill the lead right there. So you might have a lead status for duplicate lead and just move on. Dead dupe, move on or, or something. So you can put them into nurture statuses that get them out of your queue, or you can put it into a, I identify this as a duplicate and just move on but no reason to work the lead and forget all the contact history. So if it's really the same person, no reason to keep the lead, no reason to work on the lead, just do everything on the contact if they're the same person. Uh, yeah. If you are a business that sells to other businesses and let's say you've got a big account like Sony and Sony has thousands of employees, right? You might have a Sony account with your 500 contacts on there. Now a new person from Sony found your company, filled out the form, and now there's a 501 first person from Sony. What do you do? It's this is a business decision. It's not a technical problem. If the same account manager for the global account is the person that should call that lead, just skip the lead step, make them a contact, have them be a contact, just like all of the other contacts on their account, and just have your rep that owns the account own that new contact or your business could be different. That new lead comes in, it doesn't matter if their company already bought, you're gonna have your inside sales team reach out to this one new person. Well, if a, if a different person's gonna reach out to this, this new prospect anyway, then it's okay to keep them as a lead separately, let them do whatever they're gonna do, and when they finally get converted, they're added to the account as a contact. Um, but if you know they're the exact same person, don't treat them separately with two records, because you're right, you're gonna have a bunch of history here, some history there, people are gonna miss it, don't do that. Just merge them and work off of one. Or immediately don't even care about the lead and only work off the contact. All right. That makes sense. And um, Yanova is asking, can you stop people from creating duplicate contacts? So for instance, they yeah. don't allow them. Yep. Okay. That's one of the settings in that's one of the settings in the duplicate matching rules is do you block the creation of it. 
but that blocking also applies to API calls. It also applies to web to lead forms. So people could go on your website, hit a button, and then the dupe goes, ha ha, not so fast, and it doesn't create the record, and then you don't have the lead. I don't like the idea of blocking. Uh, I feel like it's, it's too heavy. Uh, if anything, I'd rather you just flag the record and then later merge them later. Uh, also, if you have Pardot, uh, there's a widget that you can put on the page. This isn't it, this isn't it, but it would look like this. There's a widget you could put on the page that goes, here are the leads that look like they belong on this account. And so if you have Pardot, Pardot can help you find all the leads and map them to the right accounts if you're an account manager, if that works for you. Right, Jerry's asking, can you create a job to generate a list of duplicate leads? He says, like the lookup does. If you're using our standard deduping tools, it would it would identify them for you, it would flag them for you. Uh, but if you you but you could, I guess. But no, I would. I, I don't. Technically, can you do it? Sure. Should you do it? No. Our standard feature will flag them for you. You'll just run a report on the flags we generate. There are, if you already have a lot of bad data, 50,000 records and most of them are duplicates, our tool will help you manage new duplicates, but there are app exchange apps that'll help you go in right now and just clean all the existing bad data. So you may just want an app exchange app um, like Dupe Catcher or uh, there's so many out there uh, that will help you do that if you have a current bad data problem. Okay, and just to clarify for Frankie here, she wanted to know, is Salesforce Engage only do you, if you have Pardot? So do you only get Salesforce Engage only if you have Pardot? Or does it work with Salesforce to be able to send campaigns? Salesforce Engage is a part of Pardot. Mm -hmm. You can still have campaigns and you can still send emails, but you're not using Pardot to do it. Uh, Engage is a part of Pardot. All right, I think that covers it. So that's um, it, just 40 minutes, 40 minutes. The questions were longer in the webinar. All right, is that it? Um, yeah, so so Jerry, I think his use case here, he says, if someone loaded a, a bunch of leads without the dupe catcher running, so he was asking about, could you ever want to create a job to generate a list of duplication leads like VLOOKUP does? He's saying, what you. if someone, yeah. Um, the standard feature set isn't great at that. The dupe catching rules aren't going to go back and do that very well. Uh, if you can create a job that finds it and flags it, you're, you can, but it's a lot of effort, I think, to create your own job that would do it. If you have a lot of bad data right now, I think it's in your best interest to go to the, I'll just show you, go to the app exchange, literally search the word duplicate. Uh, and there are just so many apps. I haven't played with nearly most, uh, nearly enough of them, but I would use one of them. These are designed to help you clean up existing duty. There are just so many. Um, and they all have various different prices. Some are free, some are paid, uh, some do different things, but I would, I would definitely recommend looking at like dupe blocker or demand tools, uh, or, you know, Cloudingo. These are the three I've probably heard of the most and they get good reviews. So if you have a current bad data problem, one of these apps is probably your path of, uh, least effort to get everything cleaned up. Okay. I think that's all we got. Yeah, you did it. That's it. Woo. All right. Well, look, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. I really, really would appreciate the feedback on this whole coronavirus set of webinars for next month. Crystal and I kind of have to make a decision on it in the next two days. And hearing from you directly would really help me decide if that's relevant or if it's just, just crazy talk, you know? So please, please take a second to fill out a survey. Let me know if this session was relevant and helpful and let me know what kinds of things you think would be most timely and relevant for your business um, in the next month, all right? Uh, if you're not sure what products you have or don't have or what edition you're on, check out the web store. You can go to the store, see your own invoices, see what you're paying, see what products you have. You can log cases with support. And if you need to reach out to your account executive because you're interested in Pardot or something, you can do that from there. Uh, and every Tuesday, every Thursday, it's me and Crystal doing something. I am taking next week off. My family and I had a Disneyland trip planned, which isn't happening, but I'm still, I still got a toddler at home. So I'm going to be doing that next week. Uh, I will be back for office hours. And then I don't know what we're going to schedule yet. I really want to wait and hear from you what makes sense for next month. Thank you all for coming. I hope this was a good use of your time. Uh, be safe and uh, I'll see y'all next time.